I would say today was pretty perfect. <laughs> we had sunshine around, comfortable temperatures, not a whole lot of wind, low humidity, and it continues to be dry. It continues to be clear right now. Temperatures, not bad. We've got them around 63 in Roanoke, 56 Hot Springs, 59 in Covington, it's 60 Smith Mountain Lake, and 54 in Withville. For Tuesday, temperatures start out right around 50. Highs top out in the middle 80s. A very, very warm day tomorrow with more sun and clouds in the forecast. We'll talk about rain chances coming up in 15 minutes. 10 News at 11 starts right now. Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 11, working for you. Now at 11, an outpouring of support for a place that's known for its community. This is more about helping the staff at CI right now while they're out of work. How a restaurant up the street is helping a Roanoke staple partially destroyed by a fire. This is frightening to watch. How that teen's fall was a sign that her entire family was in danger. It was chaos. It was um, complete chaos. The poisonous gas that sent the family of seven to a hospital. And people across Southwest Virginia are not letting a destructive storm damper their spirits. What has people from across the region coming out to help families pick up the pieces? The support keeps rolling in tonight after a fire partially destroyed a landmark Roanoke bar. Walk into Community Inn on any given day and you'll see a mix of people around these same booths. But now all of that has changed. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer is live in Roanoke's Brandon Village at the bar. Tonight. Shane, how long are they expected to be closed? Bernie and John, you know, it is way too early to even give a time frame of when Community Inn may be able to reopen. On a night like tonight, right around this time, you usually have the uh, second shift workers getting off work and headed into their neighborhood joint here at CI. But tonight, just a dark storefront. You can still smell a little bit of the charred uh, stuff that's inside the restaurant there. That smoky smell is really, really rich in there. And you know, where they're not able to come together and make this happen tonight, the neighborhood is building themselves up around them to support Community Inn. I mean, you see where they had to take some of the tiles down here. Vermont Morrow and his family, Easter Sunday 2019 may forever go down as one of their worst. It's just gut-wrenching. Um, just to see, I, I mean, I've been coming here since I was nine years old. That's when my parents bought it. 42 years ago, Community Inn began its path to becoming the landmark it is today. Apparently started in this trash can right here. A smoldering butt in a smoking section changed it in mere minutes. It kind of hurts me that people that want to come here aren't going to be able to come here because we can't get open yet. <laughs> but right around the corner, Village Grill is open. Owner Nathan Webster says they share customers and now they share pain. Everybody in this village is a family. We like to support each other, so we wanted to kind of step up and do what we thought was the best thing we could do to help out our neighbors. A staple CI dish. Schoolhouse pizza is on the menu at Village Grill. Sales of this menu item go straight to the relief fund. Community and bartenders are mixing drinks behind the bar, too. I want people to be able to come in and talk to the bartenders that they miss up there, see them, let them know they're okay, and you know, be able to support them, show them that they love them. A GoFundMe has pulled $5,000 on its way to a $50,000 goal. Family friend Tony Pierman stepping in where he can. They've never asked anybody for any help, and they would never do that. So I just thought it was important for someone to step up because I know a lot of people want to help, and I just wanted to give them an opportunity to do that. Over 40 years, there are just some things that can't be replaced, and while they'll rebuild, that's what hurts the most. A lot of stuff back there that are staple are, are gone now. And, uh, you know, we're hoping to get it back open as good as new. So not an if, but a when as to when the doors will reopen here at the Community Inn in Grandin Village. Now, most places in Virginia, you can no longer smoke inside. Community Inn was one of the few places where you could still do that. So with a fire caused by, as the fire marshal ruled it, improperly disposed of smoking materials, it begs the question, will Community Inn allow patrons to continue smoking inside? The Morrow family says they will be thinking about that decision in the coming months. Live in Roanoke, Shane Dwyer, 10 News, working for you. Other news tonight, a Covington family of seven is thankful to be alive tonight. They are recovering from carbon monoxide poisoning. They suddenly became sick and thought they were going to die. We are not exaggerating. One daughter, look at this, was alert enough to get her mother who became ill and passed out. Then what you just saw was another daughter becoming lightheaded and falling down the stairs. EMS crews arrived just minutes later. It's unforgettable. It's traumatic. It's... You know, it's something that you want to help other people from having the experience. By the grace of God, we're all um, living and breathing and 
we're going to urge and try to promote um, to everyone we can talk to the importance of a carbon monoxide detector. And the experts confirm the high carbon monoxide levels in their home could have been deadly. You can't see or smell carbon monoxide, so detectors are very important. Indiana authorities have released new and updated information about a suspect wanted for the murder of two teenage girls. A new sketch, new video, and new audio have been released to the public, all of it based on information that has surfaced in recent weeks. Dan Cheneman has the latest on this murder mystery. More than two years after the bodies of this one younger than the original. Also released a new video. The video shows a suspect walking on the bridge. When you see the video, watch the person's mannerisms as they walk. Also new, an audio recording of a man saying what sounds like, guys, down the hill. Guys, down the hill. Authorities also looking for the owner of a car parked near the crime scene. And investigators address the killer directly. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. Anna Williams' daughter, Abby, was one of the victims. Anna has waited a long time for justice. It is sad. Nobody even here thought that we would still be looking for somebody in two years in a town this size, but we are. Delphi has just under 3,000 residents. People who call it home say it hasn't been the same since the murders. You know, I used to go out at night at 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, take my trash and not even think nothing. But I, I have, but not as much anymore. Investigators continue the search for a killer who ended two lives and changed one town. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. New tonight, we're learning more about the people who died during this weekend's Sri Lankan attack. A fifth grader from Washington, D.C. was among the victims. The girl was studying abroad and was expected to return for the next school year. The school's principal said in an email that the girl was passionate about learning. As we reported, 280 people died in the blast, four of them Americans. A Halifax County man is thanking the community for their help since Friday's powerful storms. Today, the National Weather Service determined straight line wind caused the damage there and not a tornado. Ronnie Roller estimates the storm caused about $30,000 worth of damage to his property. The high winds damaged a storage shed, a couple of ATVs and the roof of his shop. I'm a lay speaker in the Methodist Church, so if the preacher's not there, I'll get up and give the message. So, and I told him I might have a good story to tell. So the next time I, I give, do my, give a message, so uh, it's, uh, it was just amazing the amount of love that's, that's been shown. The National Weather Service says the straight line wind was between 90 and 100 miles an hour. Meanwhile, people in Franklin County continue to recover from Friday's EF3 tornado. Friday, we introduced you to the Anderson family whose home was wiped out in the storm. Hundreds of people have spent the past few days helping the Andersons clean up. They'll have to demolish what's left of the home and rebuild. In the meantime, they've tried to salvage what they can. Thanks to generous donors, they'll have at least $37,000 to help them start over. It's going to be all right. God was with me, and that's all that matters. I live, live to see my grandkids and kids again. Yeah, they're out here cleaning. The Andersons will stay nearby at their parents' home while they rebuild. New at 11 tonight, it's often hard for us to understand what first responders experience, and for many times it's difficult for them, too. A wellness center in Vermont is trying to help the people on the front lines with more than just their physical health. Therapists say it's important for first responders to understand how trauma impacts them. Experts at the center say it's twice as many cops kill themselves each year then are killed by felons, and that's why they're working to help officers take care of themselves so they, in turn, can take care of their communities. Consolidating memory or understanding memory is all about putting meaning to our experiences. If we can understand our experiences as a police officer, firefighter, EMT, you know, doctor, nurse, whoever it may be, child protection worker, correctional officer, the list goes on and on. If we can understand our experiences, then we know how to integrate them into who we are. Therapists say it's important to be at the center of your own self-care. 
New at 11, the Lexington Police Department needs your help tonight. They're trying to identify this man. Police say he's wanted for shoplifting at CVS this afternoon. Officers say he drove off in a dark blue GMC sports utility vehicle. If you know who this guy is, contact the police department. Dude, tonight there is a lot of talk about vaccinations for children, but what about grown-ups? Well, the recent measles outbreak has some talking about adult vaccinations because as reporter James Dynan shows us, if you're a part of a certain age group, you may need to get your booster shots again. Nearly two decades ago, the measles was declared eliminated in the United States, but there has been an upsurge of cases, including adults who thought they were already protected. It's likely that you don't remember getting your booster shots as a kid or have lost your documentation. And depending on when you were born, you may not have been given the vaccine at all. If you were born before the 60s, you may have never been vaccinated because it was assumed you'd be exposed to the virus and would build immunity. The group of adults that may be at risk are Generation X, born in the late 60s, 70s and 80s. These adults may have been vaccinated, but never built immunity, mostly because of the way the vaccines were administered. There was a change in 1989 when the CDC began recommending two doses of the MMR, which covers the measles, mumps, and rubella, making the vaccine consistently more effective. If you're unsure of your immunity, contact your doctor. The CDC says it's safe to get another dose. For today's Health Minute, I'm James Dynan. New at 11, you'll soon have to go through a metal detector before you catch one of the newest rides in King's Dominion. The new rule for twisted timbers is because riders have been hurt while on the coaster. King's Dominion said the thrill rides unique forces may cause personal items to fall out, even if they're in your pocket. This is a look at some of those injuries. Phones and keys will have to be placed in a zippered bag below each rider's seat. One local restaurant is doing its part this Earth Day, the nationwide push that has entire states joining the ban on plastics. New at 11 tonight, a local restaurant is celebrating Earth Day by reducing its carbon footprint. Mac and Bob's restaurant in Salem announced on social media that it switched to compostable straws and paper to go bags. They also hope to get rid of styrofoam by the end of the year. Meanwhile, states like New York are banning the use of plastic bags altogether. Starting in March 2020, New Yorkers will have to bring their own reusable bags or buy some at the store. More places around the world are banning or taxing the use of plastic bags. And it's amazing if you charge people something, uh, it changes their behavior. Um, and we found that in, in Ireland when they introduced a, a plastic bag levy. Um, and suddenly you didn't see uh, the streets were so much cleaner. Plastic bag manufacturers say the ban could result in bags that are worse for the environment. Might be their opinion. All right, new at 11, chickens are helping Randolph College in Lynchburg reach high ranks. It's all part of the school's sustainability effort. Randolph College is currently ranked ninth in the nation for one of the greenest colleges, according to the Princeton Review. School leaders held a mini Earth Day festival where students were planting in the new pollinator garden, interacting with seven-week-old hens from the school's organic garden, and learning how to get involved with Lynchburg's James River Association. It's nice. It's um, things that we would be doing otherwise. Getting the ranking is just um, icing on the cake kind of thing. To keep the celebration going, tomorrow the dining hall will provide local organic meals for students and staff. New at 11, a local dance-inspired fitness business will close its doors for good on June 28th. Just Dance Roanoke has been in the community for almost nine years. The owners say they no longer have the resources to carry out their vision as their lease renewal comes up. Until then, there will still be opportunities to dance in the studio, but they're going to cut back on classes. You can find the updated class schedule on our website, WSLS.com. Happening tomorrow, a program to help eliminate pet waste in downtown Roanoke launches at a special event. Pet owners will register their dog's DNA in the Poo Prints program. This will allow property owners to find out who is not picking up their pet's waste. The event will have free activities and pet friendly businesses from 4 to 8 in front of the Transportation Museum. 
Hi there, friends. I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Jeff Hanowich. The National Weather Service concluded their storm surveys today and they found in Halifax County straight line wind damage. No tornado, but rather some really, really strong straight line winds. In Halifax County near Nathalie, they estimated with this storm 90 to 95 mile per hour winds with a damage swath a little bit over about a half a mile had some snap and uprooted trees near Nathalie and then also farther south in Halifax County near Mount Laurel Road. We had another cell that produced 90 to 100 mile per hour winds. Again, this is as strong as an EF1 tornado, but it was not a tornado. Rather, it was straight line wind damage. Uh, a little bit uh, to the uh, north and also to the east of South Boston with a damage swath of around about 1.1 miles. More snapped and uprooted trees there, along with actually some pretty big damage as well. I want to show you this map. This was sobering to look at. Okay, so on Good Friday, this past Friday, we had 15 tornado touchdowns in the Commonwealth on average per year. On average per year, the Commonwealth gets 18. Nine of those that touched down were EF zeros, three were EF ones, two were EF twos, and of course the one in Franklin County was an EF three. Tornado history since 1950 in Franklin County, we've had seven tornado touchdowns with the strongest one ever in Franklin County. What we saw this past Friday, the EF three tornado near Sindersville and Sontag, and then in Bedford, we've seen nine tornadoes since 1950. The strongest, well, we had three EF twos in 1996, another one in 2002 and another one in 2004. Now, since 1950, our viewing area has seen five EF3 tornadoes. Of course, the Elin one last year, the Evergreen Appomattox County tornado in 2016. It goes without saying, of course, the 2019 tornado that happened on Friday in Southern Franklin County. We also had one in 1969 in Halifax County and one in 1986 in Charlotte County. So far, since 1950, in the Commonwealth, we've had now 34 EF3 tornadoes. For us, thank goodness, today was quiet. We had sunshine around. We were comfortable. Future trackers showing overnight tonight being fair. Heading into Tuesday, we are looking at mostly sunny skies. Maybe a few more clouds tomorrow afternoon than what we're going to have out there in the morning, but overall tomorrow looks beautiful, and tonight looks like a great night to take in the Leeward Meteor Shower. Could see up to 15 to 20 meteors per hour. To find it, go to a dark place. I always recommend the Blue Ridge Parkway because of uh, the lack of ambient light. Best viewing will be before dawn looking to the northeastern sky. Our next storm system will impact us a little bit on Thursday, bringing us some hit or miss showers, perhaps even a few thunderstorms. But the best chance for rain this week will lie on Friday when this cold front moves through here. It's going to bring us scattered showers and some thunderstorms. Best chance for severe weather on Friday looks to be to the south of us. So it's going to clear our area Friday night and that should leave us dry heading into Saturday. One thing I will tell you is because we're going to be dry over the next couple of days, we're going to have a high pollen count Tuesday through Thursday. When the chance for rain increases, the pollen will go down on Friday. Your extended forecast showing highs in the 80s tomorrow. Then we're in the 70s Wednesday through Monday. Again, best chance for rain this week will be Friday. For the weekend, most part, we're looking dry. Saturday, 73, mostly sunny. Maybe a stray shower late Sunday in the mountains. Otherwise, another chance for pop-up showers, maybe even a stray storm on Monday. Abby. All right, Jeff, we'll hear from the Redskins ahead of the upcoming NFL draft, and the Dogs close the books on a successful season for their young franchise. Sports is next. It's got a lot.com. All right, one of Virginia's final four heroes, Kyle Guy, has made it official. There will be no takebacks, according to his Twitter account this afternoon, and a UVA basketball release later this evening. He will not be returning to Virginia and remains in the NBA draft pool. He said in part saying goodbye twice is not easy. Meanwhile, UVA rising junior guard Marco Anthony also announced he'll be transferring to another school. He's got two years of eligibility remaining. We are counting down to the NFL draft Thursday night. The Redskins certainly have a question mark at quarterback. Trading for Case Keenum this offseason certainly helps, but Doug Williams explains that is not necessarily the end of this story. You know, we needed a quarterback, and uh, we was able to trade for, for Case. But that does not put us out the rim of picking a quarterback if it's one there that we like at 15. We don't know who's going to be there uh, at 15. We got some guys that we do like. And um, if, if those guys are there, that's a discussion that has to be had. And I'm sure uh, we'll come up and that's a possibility it would happen. 
The Redskins finished the season with Josh Johnson at quarterback after Alex Smith and Colt McCoy both suffered broken legs. The Redskins have Case Keenum and they signed the local product Josh Woodrum. And as you heard uh, Doug talk about, he has the 15th pick in this year's draft. All right, Birmingham and Huntsville will meet in the SPHL President's Cup best of three finals beginning Friday. The dogs bowed out of these playoffs over the weekend in the semifinal round. Alyssa Ray looks back at their successful season. Hockey season has come to an end here in Roanoke, but the rail yard dogs are coming off the best season they've had in franchise history, advancing to the SPHL playoff semifinals before falling short to Birmingham on Saturday. In game three, the dogs were a period and a half from advancing to the President's Cup finals before the Bulls made a comeback to win six to four. In that third period, it was that four minute stretch after we went up four two. Um, all the momentum in the world and we let them creep back in before the uh, before the intermission and I, and I think uh, you know that's what really hurt us. Fifth seed Roanoke kicked off their playoff run with an upset over number one seeded regular season champs Peoria in the challenger round. Obviously be becoming the fifth seed earning the fifth seed and then the one seed picking us and knocking them off in the first round you know that just shows that any any team can win on any given night and uh, if you get the right group of guys it's guys together, you can really do something special. As the dog's success grows, so does their popularity. The Berglund Center has been a hotbed for hockey fans. We love our fans. Uh, loudest, I'll say loudest in the SPHL. I think the best fans in the SPHL. Um, you know, we only had a crowd, I think it was a crowd of 16, 1700 at our first uh, playoff home game, but it was deafening in there. Um, the noise was incredible. It's a great place to play. Uh, just, you know, the passion, you go into some road, we'll go into some road games and it's not even close to what we get here. And, you know, having that makes you want to play for it, definitely. The Dogs finished with a record of 28, 24 and 4, the most wins in a single season in their three year history. In Roanoke, Alyssa Ray, 10 Sports. All right, thanks, Alyssa. Meantime, Caps look to advance tonight, game six of their playoff series with Carolina, but there is a hurricane warning in Raleigh on the ice, 1-1 one, one late first, Alex Ovechkin, and that is a rocket, 2-1 caps after one. 2-2 two, two in the third now, and the Canes, well, they get a shot on goal right here, and the puck is loose in front. That's never a good situation. Jordan Stahl the finish. Carolina had a 3-2 lead. But this one comes down to this. The Caps would answer right back, at least we thought they did, because Nets off the stuff shot in front. Ovechkin finishes with the poke there, the loose puck, and the goal, but the goal is waved off. They review it, still no goal. Carolina rolls 5-2 from there to even the series at three. So game seven, Wednesday night in D.C. Duke gets another five-star recruit. They'll likely have the top recruiting class in the nation. Bucks have swept the Pistons. Houston right now is at Utah. And Luke Walton is being sued for alleged sexual assault stemming from an incident occurred in 2017. He just, as you know, took the Sacramento Kings job just a couple days ago. Light of the night. Off the miss, the Pistons, Reggie Jackson. They call this parachuting in as he drops in to drop that one. But the Bucks win. They get John Carlin's Boston Celtics in the next round. Give us a call. Today we forecast a high of 74. Actual high got up to 76. $10 in the pot, $520 raised for Make-A-Wish Greater Virginia. Highs tomorrow should be in the 80s. Pretty warm, Hades arguably hot. Nice. Yeah, we'll, mm -hmm. okay. We well. will take it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be pretty sunny tomorrow we will, too. We will not complain. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Tonight show Jimmy Fallon coming up next. The news continues tomorrow morning with Virginia Today.